This music is from a 14th century manuscript called the Libra Femel de Montserrat, and the words go ad mortem festina mus, which means we are hastening to death, and it was a song for pilgrims to sing and dance to. So what does a medieval pilgrim dance have to do with algorithms? It all comes down in the end, like so many things in life, to accounting. Did you know that the word mortgage literally means death pledge? It comes from the Latin mort meaning death and an old Germanic word gage meaning something pledged. In the case of a mortgage, you offer a pledge on your house until the debt is fully repaid, or you might say until the debt and the contract die. In this video, we're going to study the aggregate complexity of sequences of operations performed on a data structure and we're going to use amortized analysis. Amortize is another word from accountancy and it comes from the Latin ad meaning towards and mort meaning death. Again with the hastening towards death. So what's doing the dying and what does it have to do with data structures? Keep watching and all will become clear. I want to start with a very simple data structure. I'm calling this a min list and it's the sort of data structure you might want to use if you're storing logs, maybe logs of your website's performance and if you have a daily dashboard and you want to be able to quickly pull out details about the worst performing page request each day. Have a read and then think about how you'd implement it. Pause the video and when you've decided how you'd implement these four functions then press play. I want to describe four stages of enlightenment about the implementation. Stage zero, we'll just store all the values in a linked list, the simplest thing we can think of. Whenever we want to find the minimum item, we'll just trawl through the whole list. Okay, well, that is a bit simplistic, especially if we're showing a daily dashboard and the user is constantly refreshing it. It's dumb to trawl through the whole list each time. It takes time big O of N, where N is the number of items we should cache the answer. And this leads us to stage one of enlightenment. We'll implement min differently this time. We'll keep a pointer to what was the tail of the queue last time that min got called. And we'll remember the minimum item that we found up to that point. So that the next time someone calls min, all we need to look at is the newly added items. But does this actually help? Well, what's the worst case? The worst case is still big O of n, because in the worst case there was no earlier call to min and we have to trawl through the entire list. Okay, let's try and be cleverer. Let's update our current minimum every single time we append a new item. Then the min function is big O of 1 because we've already computed the answer and append is also big O of 1 because it's just a constant amount of extra work for each item we append. Great. Well, except it does feel like we've lost something here. It feels unfair to say that stage two is better than stage one because it doesn't actually do less work. In fact, it does more. <laughs> if the user of this data structure adds some items and then calls flush and then calls min, then there's no need to even run the comparisons on those newer items because they get flushed. So this leads us to the fourth and final stage of enlightenment. Our implementation here is exactly what it was for stage one, but we're going to argue that its performance is just as good as stage two. Let's talk through the argument. Here, I've drawn out some of the operations. Let's imagine we've done three appends and then we call min. The size of these rectangles indicates the running time of each of the operations, so we could call the x-axis here accumulated cost or accumulated running time. Let's give it some notation. Let's say that the running time of each of the calls to append is c sub app, and the running time of min is c1 plus n times c2, where n is the number of newly appended items that the min function will have to iterate through. Now, here's the big idea. Let's take that cost c1 plus n times c2 and ascribe it to some of the earlier operations. Let's ascribe c2 to each of the appends, leaving just c1 to ascribe to the min. 
but this is purely for accounting purposes. There's no sense in which we've changed the actual running time of anything. And in fact, we use the word borrowed from accounting to describe this. We'd call these costs that we've ascribed amortized costs. In this picture, each of the append operations has amortized cost C sub app plus C2, which is big O of one, and min has amortized cost C1, which is again big O of one. Neither of those two costs depends on N. So why are we playing these accounting games? The whole idea is to try and make it easier to reason about aggregate costs. Remember from the last video, we talked about the hare and the tortoise, and we said that what matters for a data structure is the aggregate cost of a sequence of operations. And we also said that big O bounds aren't very much use unless they're tight. Let's have a look at an aggregate analysis of our min list data structure. We'll do the analysis twice, once with simple per operation accounting, once with amortized accounting. Let's imagine that we ran some appends, then a min, then some more appends, then min, and so on. Let's say we've done M1 appends in total, and M2 calls to min. This is how we do a simple per operation complexity analysis. Pause the video, have a read, and make sure it's all what you'd expect. The only thing worth pointing out here is step two, where we say the worst case cost of min is big O of M1. This is just because M1 is the maximum number of items there can be in the list, seeing as we've done M1 append. And as we said earlier, the worst case cost of min is big O of number of items. And here's how the same analysis would go with amortized costs. Again, pause the video and have a read. The big thing to stress, once again, is that amortized analysis is just an accounting trick. It's a way of ascribing costs differently, and it doesn't change the total running time. That's why I'm allowed to just add up the amortized costs to get the total cost of this entire sequence of operations. And what you see is that the big O bound we get from the simple per operation accounting is worse than what we got from the amortized accounting. The per operation accounting did not give us a tight bound. So that's why we do amortized accounting. It's meant to be an easier way to get tight bounds for aggregate costs. And as we said when we talked about the hare and the tortoise, it's aggregate costs that matter. And the tighter the bound, the more useful it is. Well, that's a caveat. For some purposes, it's aggregate costs that matter. For some purposes, it's per operation costs. Let's go back to our four stages of enlightenment. We've just been analyzing the stage one, stage three implementation and arguing why it's a good implementation as far as aggregate costs are concerned. But if you're programming a game, for example, it isn't just aggregate costs you care about, it's the speed of every single operation. You can't use something like Java with its garbage collection because who knows when garbage collection will kick in and make your game freeze for several frames. If we wanted to Im implement this min list, and if we really cared about the speed of every single operation, we would prefer the stage two implementation. You can sort of think of it as amortizing the code. We're taking the min function and all the comparisons it needs to do, and we're moving those comparisons into other parts of our code base. So, when a computer scientist talks about amortizations, there are two things that we might mean. We might mean amortize your logic. In other words, take some logic and move it to other bits of the code base so that we don't have any nasty surprises with some functions that are really slow. Or we might mean amortizing the costs. In other words, an accounting trick that we're using purely for the analysis of aggregate running times. And what you'll see in the rest of this course, when we look at some very elegant amortized algorithms, is that both of those ideas come into play. To get the very best aggregate costs, we sometimes do need to ship the logic around, and then on top of that, we have to be clever in our accounting. Let me finish with a few words about death. The word amortize is an accounting term. If you have a five-year mortgage, for example, there's a large bill that you have to pay at the end of five years, and you pay it bit by bit in installments before the final balance becomes due. 
and that is called amortization. And in computer science, we're doing exactly the same thing. The mort, or death in this case, is the end of the debt, the time point at which the balance has to be paid and at which the loan comes to an end. And we're taking steps towards that point. Hence, ad mortem, or amortized.